You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You. Thanks for joining us today, and thank you for joining us as always, as it is our goal at Drone You to help you build confidence and build the skills to pay the bills, because 107 is just the first stepping stone, and you gotta do so much more to build a scalable and successful drone business. And we like to help people do that because it is true freedom and independence. But anyway, as always, my name is Paul. And as always, my name's Rob. Hasn't changed. Glad that you're with us. Super happy to be hanging out with you and very grateful that you're hanging out with us. AskDroneU.com for your questions. I know we've been limited on bombshells, Rob, but uh, one bombshell is that we just met a guy on the field named Bob and the callers today, his name is Rob and you're Rob. So He's I would getting say really confusing. three Bobs don't make a right. What? So huh? anyway, but anyway, I'm very excited to be here as always. We're just going to get right into today's question, which is all about flying in the rain. And uh, what happens if you are flying and then it starts to rain? Uh, what do you do to take care of your drone to make sure that you don't have further damage to that aircraft? And also we're going to go over some things to look for. Uh, if it is kind of on the precipice of raining, there is a very important indicator that you should be aware of to ensure that you're gonna have a safe flight and no I'm not talking about the battery test or the third rule of takeoff I'm talking about something a little bit more advanced and frankly when it comes to thinking about 107 it blows my mind that uh, we don't have more questions on this particular indicator but it just goes to show 107 it's your stepping stone right it's it's just your first kind of here's your business license congrats Go make it happen, right? So we yeah. are we are trying to make it happen for you guys. Absolutely. Hello, Paul and Rob. My name's Rob also from Lafouche Drone Services. I got a question. Uh, this happened to me the other day, and I don't remember hearing about this in any previous podcast. Weather was nice outside. I was flying. I was doing some mapping, and all of a sudden, it started to drizzle. So I immediately shut it down, uh, landed, but... My unit, which was the Phantom 4 Pro, it did get a little wet, and I basically brought it inside, and, and I wasn't quite sure what to do. Turn it upside down. It wasn't, it wasn't engulfed in rain or anything like that because there was only a light drizzle. But uh, in a situation like that, what, what should you do? Appreciate the podcast. Really good information there. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate you, Rob. And uh, yeah, thank you for taking the time to go to astronew.com and ask your question. As is often the case, I think uh, certainly Paul can answer that question or we can answer the question about what to do, but uh, maybe go a little deeper on some of the issues surrounding rain and flying in the rain and predicting rain and all that kind of stuff. And so just to clarify uh, the context here, uh, this Rob was at our most recent uh, mapping class, which I actually uh, forgot to mention to you. We have a, another client who wants to book a private mapping class. Oh. I totally forgot about that. Oh. And uh, long story short is he was at our mapping class and we had some rain and he was asking me, uh, what do you do when it rains? And I told him to flip the drone over and leave it out and let it dry off. But to add more context to that, uh, I think it's a really good idea to add like a mic micro fiber cloth below the gimbal just so that if water does drip off of it, it doesn't drip into uh, any parts of the aircraft itself or on one of those sensors. Hmm. And so when it comes to if you do f end up flying in those conditions, you do want to bring the aircraft down. I recommend wiping it off. You got to be really careful though to not uh, you know, spread the water into areas that may cause further damage, yeah. which is why we say you know, turn the drone over and that way if water does come it's falling out of the drone but you know with the phantom in his particular case in that gimbal i think it's a good idea to add that microfiber cloth below the gimbal sure what about uh, the air spray so i the air spray i'm not really sure would help in this particular context hmm. the the blowing the air through the motors and the gimbal motors is really more for dust right uh and dirt not really for water per se 
Hmm. Um, I would be hesitant to recommend anyone do that. For fear of blowing water further up into it mm-hmm. or something? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that said, this brings up a very important issue. Uh, if you are flying and it looks like it's the precipice of rain, one important indicator that you should be aware of is the temperature dew point spread. Is it within five degrees? And why does this matter? Well, if the temperature dew point spread is very close together, well, obviously you're going to get rain. But what you're also going to get is a buildup of moisture below the props. And as that happens, well, the drone has to take more amperage and more power to spin that prop faster to acquire the same amount of lift. And oftentimes, if you get a motor overspin warning, it's typically because the aircraft is having to work too hard to produce the same amount of lift. If you continue the flight, well, you could have a catastrophic accident. Uh, So it's important to know that. That also typically uh, uh, will cause an environment of fog. And Mm. I know a lot of pilots love flying in fog, but it is absolutely one of the most dangerous uh, places to fly, if we haven't learned that from manned aviation crashes like what happened in the last few years. Um, well, not to mention the three miles of visibility, right? It's uh, kind of, bingo. Kind of important. Bingo, Rob. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that particular sentiment. That said, uh, when the aircraft, you know, does get, uh, you know, does get that wet, uh, well, you got to dry it off. Now, one more tip I want to give you is if it's just drizzling and you're doing a mapping mission, in a lot of the mapping applications, you can change the orientation of the aircraft as it's doing the mapping mission so that you can fly in reverse Hmm. to keep the camera lens free of debris and water. Interesting. One thing that came to mind I was wondering about is if you're specifically talking about a Phantom, it's got sort of that top lid, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that comes off relatively easily. Um, uh, a couple of few screws. Sixteen. I think it's sixteen. Let's see. Two so, on eh, I mean, eight, anyways, four. is it worth taking that off it to let it air out? Uh, I no, I don't think so. No, I do don't not think, think it's necessary. So. All right. No, if you've got a hot, dry room, because he's in Louisiana, so that's hard to find. Dry, right? It is. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take a while for that. Yeah, it's it's going to get moldy before it dries out. Ugh. Not careful. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, mold is such a very real uh, problem. I love the West. Anyways. I do too. I do too. Um, anyways, it's. I would say, you know, dry it out. Uh, if you do wipe it off with a microfiber cloth, I would say uh, steer clear of the motors. Let those dry out on their own. Um, also be careful you don't wipe water into any of your sensors, especially those ultrasonic sensors. And it, do let it dry out uh, for at least a day, 24 hours, upside down. And I would put a cloth at the very top of that gimbal well top of the gimbal but when it's upside down it's on the bottom um but long story short is i think that's the best course of action but this brings up a really important point because like the m200 m210 those are like all ip i think 46 i don't know if that's correct ip46 rated for weather Mm. and i have to say i've seen phantoms perform way better Mm. in inclement weather so it's a bulletproof aircraft you know dji built their entire brand on that thing and you know people need to remember that as to why it's so, so successful. So anyway, goes back to, you know, Bob over here. There'd be a lot better photos on a nice large sensor, you know, with adjustable True. aperture and 4K60 video. But hey, you do you, right? That's exactly right. That's us creatives. We are all different. And you know yeah. what? The more the merrier. And honestly, the more unique we are, fantastic. Everyone's got a different style. And I, yeah, I like absolutely. It. And he seemed pretty, uh, pretty confident in his perspective, which I think is awesome. Yeah. But obviously he's willing to learn. He's out there learning every day. A hundred percent. And at the end of the day, if you're getting paid for your work and you continue to get paid for your work, then your system's working, at least whatever iteration of that system that you have. So (laughs) Yeah, it can always be better. That's right. But nonetheless. That's right. Thank you again for joining us today on this very short uh, show. And Rob, thanks again for joining us here at Flight Mastery and at Mapping Class. Quick reminder that we are going to have an experience training in November, the first two weeks of November. And if you want to spend some time hanging out with us, and you want to learn and you want to be, well, kind of thrown in the tank and complete a drone job and have to actually present those deliverables and materials before you leave, be graded on it. I think it's going to be one of those trainings that you absolutely do not want to miss. So it's going up on the website here shortly. But uh, this is kind of like our mini fly-in. A lot of people have asked me for this and we're finally doing it. So, yeah. (laughs) What's that? 
Well, the the experience training uh-huh. as a mini fly in. It's yeah. I took. I caught a lot more than that than uh, a mini me fly too. in. That's why I made yeah. that sound. Yeah, <laughs> but it's gonna be awesome. It's well, for be those awesome. of us, for those people who know us, I'm just trying to kind of give them a comparable. So, Got it. Like yeah. a sense of what to expect from the week. Yeah, it's like a mini fly in, except you never leave the site because you're staying on site, and you're going through multiple days of training before being tested, and then you're being graded on your tests, and then we're having Kara teach her sales and autonomy class to easily scale your business in person uh, for two days, and you can actually attend that class separate of the experience training, Um, and I have to say, ladies and gentlemen... She is so brilliant. She is unbelievably brilliant. And this, these systems are a game changer doesn't really illustrate. It's a paradigm shift in the convenience of running your company. Yeah. I'm doing what she's teaching. Like I'm, I'm doing it because I, it, it's so good. I'm excited to sit through it. Yeah, frankly. seriously. So you won't want to miss that. Check those out on our events page. They will be up shortly, but that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Dronio.